Welcome everyone to this very special joyous occasion. It's the launch of two very timely books, Margie Abbott's Cosmic Sparks, Igniting a Reenchantment with the Sacred, and Jennifer Callanan's Sparks of the Universe, Prayers and Rituals for Young People and Adolescents Embracing the Spirit of Laudato Si. And uh, what a joy it is to see everyone. I can see a lot of people still are getting on at this time. Um, so as we get going, we're going to be welcoming a whole lot, of, whole lot more people. We're expecting somewhat uh, around 100 participants today and everybody's very welcome. Just about Zoom, um, I, at the moment I'm sharing a screen showing you how to access and order the books um, and the, the um, covers of each of the books. Um, but soon I'll stop share and you'll be able to see each other, which is quite fun. Um, it's a lovely gathering of friends and family uh, of Jen and Margie's today. And um, if you're not familiar with Zoom, although I think those many of us are in the last couple of weeks becoming more and more familiar with Zoom, you'll see up in the right hand corner the option to press gallery view so that you can see everybody or um, just the speaker view if you would prefer to see one person who's speaking at a time. I'd just like to invite Marnie's niece, Michelle Abbott, who's with us to lead us in the acknowledgement of country. In recognition of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people's spiritual and cultural connection to country, we acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands that we meet on today. We acknowledge the continued care of the lands and waterways over generations, and we celebrate the continuation of a living culture. We pay our respects to elders past, present, emerging, for they hold the memories, the traditions, the culture and the hopes for all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people across this nation and hope they will walk with us on our journey. Thank you, Michelle. So just a little bit more by way of introduction and uh, spe the specific context of this gathering. My name's Sally Neves. I'm the Education Coordinator at Rahamim Ecology Centre. And this event is really the rolling together of three individual in-person events that were meant to be happening if it wasn't for COVID-19. Uh, Marty and Jen were due to have an Adelaide launch and a Melbourne launch and also an online launch with us at Rahamim. So we've rolled all three events together and we've ended up with this marvellous gathering of friends and family uh, around the world. We're recording this as well. So um, many friends, I think especially um, relatives of um, Margie and Jens who are unable to be with us this particular time zone uh, will be able to see it later. This also happens to be the last official event of Rahamim Ecology Centre. So um, I'm sure you'll all be holding us um, at this time. Uh, although the work of Rahamim will continue and you can continue watching this space. Uh, as we roll into a new form of that ministry. I'd like to welcome some special guests and also acknowledge an apology from Sister Evelyn Crotty, the leader of the Institute of the Sisters of Mercy of Australia and Papua New Guinea. However, present today as special guests, we have Sisters of Mercy, Carolyn Ryan and Maureen Sexton, who were representing the leadership team of the Sisters of Mercy. And we also have Christina Aitken, um, and Mari Ralph, who are community leaders of the Sisters. We also have Denise Fox, CEO of Macaulay Ministries, and Patricia Powell, who's the Rahamin manager and co-founder. And a wide welcome to all Sisters of Mercy, and there are many of you joining us today. Thank you, you're very welcome. I'd also like to welcome Anne Boyd, who will be launching the book, and more about Anne later. Gail Wassello is joining us from Green Mountain Monastery in the Thomas Berry Sanctuary in Greensboro, Vermont, USA. And Brenda Pettigrew, Sister of Mercy of the Newfoundland Congregation, joining us from Solwins in Ontario, Canada. 
Uh, also, a special welcome to those who will be leading the event today. Uh, you'll notice that it's been carefully designed by Jan and Margie to be a ritual in itself. So this is celebrating the launch of two books of rituals, but it in itself will be, I hope, a, a very um, attentive and, and beautiful ritual. So welcome to Carmel Cramery, Trevor Parton, Michelle Abbott, Lola Gleason, Cheryl Sullivan, Jen Ringbau, and Helen Kierens, who will lead us in the ritual today. Also a warm welcome to those uh, members of the publisher Coventry Press and all of Jen and Margie's family, friends and colleagues. So Jen Ringbau is going to lead us in our opening song. She's uh, actually written this song herself. Uh, Jen is a member of the education team at Rahamim Ecology Centre. This is her own music um, drawing us together at this time of wishing um, wishing well Maggie and Jen in their work and the release of this, this beautiful um, work that they've produced. Thank you, Jen. to introduce the wonderful Margie and Jen. Margie Abbott, author of Cosmic Sparks. Margie is a Sister of Mercy based in Geelong, with qualifications in education, spirituality, theology, facilitation and psychodrama. She leads eco-spirituality retreats. She's a Laudato Sea animator and facilitates groups nationally and internationally. Margie highly values inner independence, the contemplative stance, and active hope for a healing world. Cosmic Sparks is her fourth book. And Jennifer Callanan is author of Sparks of the Universe. Jen lives in Adelaide and is an educator, facilitator, and author with a career in education spanning over 40 years. Sparks of the Universe, her second book, is a contribution towards awakening our relationship with and appreciation for Earth, our common home, and shared origins with all creation. And as Daniel Byrne, who couldn't be with us today, said of both books, of both women, at times like these, we need your sparks and your beautiful positive energy to heal all, including our universe. So it's over to you, Jen and Margie, to speak of your dedications. Thank you, Sally. Jen and I would love to just have a conversation with you for a few moments, um, a shared conversation with you about not only our dedications, but 
the fact that it takes more than a village to raise a child and it does take a lot of people to create a book <laughs> and we want to honour that. So I would like to begin by honouring David Lovell, whom I dedicated my book to, because Jen and I started conversations with David like way back when we first mooted writing our books, probably toward the end of 2017, yeah. early 2018. And then sadly, David died in September of 2018. So inclusive in my dedication to David is his memory as a renowned publisher and also a very dear friend. And, and thanks, Margie. Um, in my dedication, it, it's, I almost feel greedy like there's so many elements that are part of my life and part of, of, of your lives too in many ways. And um, I, I dedicate the essence of Sparks of the Universe to Desert Camels. My brother's nickname was Camel. Um, Golden Wattle. Oscar, Ned Edwards and Harriet Anne Wright, who are very new sparks to our universe. They're both nearly 18 months old, I think, um, coming up. Um, the black and white swans and, and those amazing ancient rocks of the Great Ocean Road that with my family and cousins, we used to explore them. And it's only now that I've come to understand their evolution and, and their part in our amazing evolving. Um, the little New Holland honey eaters, the birds, I've started to identify the names of birds in my backyard and they hop around. Endangered sea turtles and all other endangered animals, monarch butterflies, and, um, and my little companion Red, who's on the back of the book, four-legged companion who, who wakes me up and, and draws me deep into her eyes and her little buddy, the, the tunny dog, Molly, they're great mates. And uh, to the night skies, um, I remember beautiful moments picking the Kimberley, the night skies awakening and drawing me deeper. And also to all sparks of the universe that have been, that are here right now and that are to come. Thank you. And so as well as, as, well as these dedications, we, we're really grateful to everyone I mean, obviously, everyone who's here today, we're grateful that you all turned up because you make matter to us. But also to so many people, and it's not going to be possible to name everybody. Yeah. But whilst we were writing the books, we were very inspired. Um, and I have to say, largely influenced by Pope Francis's Laudato Si. And the English um, version, of course, is or translation is caring for our common home. But we really first and foremost want to honour Earth, the four elements of, of water, air, fire and Earth itself, and also the seasons. We also acknowledge um, Australia's first peoples. Both of our books have reference to rituals that include our acknowledgement of them and our reverence for how they tended the lands thousands of years before white settlement. Mm -hmm. And then there are people like Elizabeth Johnson and Thomas Berry and Dermodo Merku and <laughs> Norm Harbell and Sean McDonough and so many more who have inspired us and the poets, the three poets who are going to read their poetry to you in a while. These are beautiful, inspirational poets. And then we have climate activists, we have artists, we have musicians, all of whom have inspired us as we've been putting together our books. And uh, Chris, I don't think can make it today from Indonesia, but she actually made the cover for my book. She created it and Jen created her own cover from that beautiful piece of, of art behind her head right now, for those of you who can see Jen. So I want to give thanks to all of you. <laughs> and no book is uh, without a publisher. And um, we thank Coventry Press and, uh, 
and Hugh for the work in editing and a little bit of chewing and froing and preparing the manuscripts to be the stunning uh, books that they are today. Uh, he got them to the publisher and then Nikki, we thank you for, for getting them off the publisher's floor, as you put it, and getting them out into the world. And, and I know when we both eventually opened the boxes, the courier man was at my front door and he said, what's in there? And I said, do you want to have a look? <laughs> and uh, he was hilarious. He was the first one to see it with me. And he said, oh, my kid, my we was in the Catholic school. I'll tell them about it. And um, and the delight of, 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 the, of what the fruits of, of all their work. So we're very grateful, Coventry Press. Thank you. And since we are not coming back to be with you in a talking way for the rest of the time, uh, we, we turn to you, Sally, because we could not have had this launch without all the time that you've put in from Rahamim Ecological Centre. You've just been such a generous giver and you've given hours of your time and you've just made our dream become a reality. So thank you. Um, and Anne Boyd, who'll be you'll be launching our book in a few moments. Um, a big personal thanks from both of us. Um, you've known Margie some time, and you and I met just the other day on Zoom. And that's what I'm loving about COVID nineteen. Like there's so many new connections and meetings. It's wonderful. And then we established some of your people know people I went to teachers college with. I mean the network is it's fabulous. So. We are very, very grateful that, that you are in the country and healthy and, and well to be here. And to all of you that um, are present here in this moment, we really, I can see like potters are my friends and uh, I can't see all the screens. I don't know, actually everyone who's here can't see them all, but it, it's just a gorgeous um, mural to be viewing you. We are grateful that you're here creating together this ritual and being with us. Thank you. Thanks, Ted and Margie. And I'm sure I speak for all of us when I say we are all behind you and this beautiful gift that you are releasing into the world today. I would now like to introduce Anne Boyd. We're very fortunate to have Anne with us. Anne is a Brigidine sister who is currently serving on the international leadership team as a deputy leader of the Brigidine congregation. Anne is much loved and fondly remembered by many for her years on the coordinating team of Earth Song, along with Pat Mong, who's with us today as well. Facilitating Earth Literacy workshops and retreats and as editor of the journal Earth Song, a journal that continues to resound with beauty and relevance, which will endure for many years to come. And by the way, those journals are all freely available at the moment to everyone on, as an electronic resource on the Rahamin website. I know that Anne was deliberately chosen to launch these books for her own deep appreciation and sensitivity to design of ritual that has the power to remind us of our place in the cosmic story. So welcome, Anne Boyd. Thank you, Sally, and thank you, Margie and Jen, for the honour of being with you today. From the moment of the first flaring forth of inspirited matter, from the heart of divine mystery, approximately 14 billion years ago, the universe has unfolded in a somewhat erratic rhythm. There have been bursts of great energy and then there have been apparently stagnant periods, but always emerging into new explosive moments, at times apparently violent or destructive to human sensitivities but always resulting in arrays of greater creativity and diversity, all held together in the communal embrace of the originating divine mystery. As on the macro scale, so on the micro scale. And on this precious blue planet of ours, the emergence of the human from our primate origins reached a crescendo in Homo sapiens sapiens as we developed our self-reflective consciousness. In so doing, we searched for answers to the great cosmological questions. Where did we come from? How did we get here? 
and what is our role and purpose. In this adventure of discovery, we develop belief systems, each with cultural overtones, and for most of us here, other than those who have roots in Indigenous or Asian cosmologies, the major cult cultural influence on our belief systems has been Christianity with its Judaic roots. This belief system flourished in the so-called Western world and was transferred from its European origin to colonised countries, Australia included. Those of us who grew up in this religious culture were well trained in a relationship with the God who was beyond. This God who resided above in a heavenly realm, beyond the dome of our flat earth, every now and then intervened in human history, usually for the benefits of those who were the chosen ones of the deity. But to a large extent, the deity only interviewed, intervened as a result of outbursts of petitionary prayer on the part of those who were to benefit. As with all aspects of the evolutionary story, often small elements of deeper insight emerge from the observers and listeners who were open to adapting to a changing awareness. Amongst them were mystics, scientists, poets, musicians, cosmologists, philosophers, geotheologians, systems thinkers, and wisdom figures in many other fields, none of whom we have time to name now. They began awakening us to the interconnectedness of all things and to a deity who is not distant in some other ethereal world, but who is mysteriously embedded in the very earth from which we come. Enter Pope Francis, a man belonging to a continent that holds the lungs of Earth's oxygenated atmosphere. A man formed in the tradition of Tyard, finding God in all things. A man with a rather conservative spirituality in many ways, but passionately open to the urgings of the spirit hovering over the waters of chaos and moving through creation with the vibrancy for life. And so in June 2015, the Earth community was gifted with the turbulent new emergence known as Laudato Si. For those of us who have been absorbing the fruits of evolutionary consciousness over recent years, this encyclical is a precious gift. So now in this context, enter Margie and Jen, bearing further gifts. The very titles of their books, Cosmic Sparks and Sparks of the Universe, bring joy to our hearts. These titles carry a promise of stardust, which to paraphrase Brian Swim's words, if left alone for 14 billion years, becomes kangaroos, kookaburras, gum trees, wattle, echidnas, platypus, and humans. Margie and Jen have offered us myriad rituals that are grounded in the spirituality and teachings of Laudato Si, the recent exciting discoveries of science, as well as the underlying but often little known, small i incarnational and small s sacramental heritage of our Christian tradition. In the introduction to Sparks of the Universe, Jen quotes the Catholic Catechism of all things, which reminds us, we must continually purify our language of everything that is limited, image bound or imperfect if we are not to confuse our image of God, the inexpressible, the invisible, the ungraspable, with our human representations. Our human words always fall short of the mystery of God." End of quote. 
let us hold on to such gems in the Christian tradition whilst we let go of all that cannot nourish life into the future. So go for it, all of you who intuitively, indeed genetically, know that you must break the bonds of the confinement of religious and cultural traditions that tell us of a God beyond. Know that God, by whatever name, is with us in the coronavirus, in the everyday joys, hopes, griefs and anxieties of all beings in the community of life on this planet. I would love to lead you through each of the rituals in Cosmic Sparks and Sparks of the Universe, but not so today. You will find rich lists of resources and songs and poetry and music and whatever else you would desire in such a book. Suffice to say, Margie and Jen have contributed so significantly to an emerging applied integral spirituality by offering language, language so badly needed, symbols and imagery that honour divine mystery as the ground of all being. These are based in a new cosmology, a new spirituality a new theology, underpinned by new wisdom, but also very ancient wisdom, embraced and transcended. So far, teachers, parents, community prayer leaders have had limited resources to support the nurturing of the integral ecology of Laudato Si in terms of ritual. These two books are an invaluable source, not only for ideas about prayer, ritual and language, but they are in addition, an educational tool for adults, teachers, parents, pastoral associates, leaders of home churches, people of all faiths and none, and perhaps even coordinators of plenary council groups and innumerable others. All of, wish, wish, all of whom wish to find more meaningful and relevant ways of honouring their experience of Earth as our common home. The rhythm of the school day and year, the energies of the compass points of our revolving planet and her moments of disruption and recovery, the pattern of the daily cycle, an engagement with Earth's rotation around our life-giving star, the church's liturgical seasons, and our groundedness in the elements of Earth, air, fire, and water. These are all included. But the rituals also acknowledge the pain of ecological destruction, the loss of species, and the debilitating interference of human activity on the planet's ecological life support systems. Do hearken to the words of Pope Francis. I urgently appeal then for a new dialogue about how we are shaping the future of our planet. We need a conversation that includes everyone since the environmental challenge we are undergoing and its human roots concern and affect us all. Do also enjoy the riches offered in these books as you remember Francis' words, soil, water, mountains, everything is, as it were, a caress of God. The universe unfolds in God who fills it completely. Hence, there is a mystical meaning to be found in a leaf, in a mountain trail, in dewdrop, and in a poor person's face. Margie and Jen, by your deep listening to the whisperings of our animate earth, your attention to the voice of Pope Francis, you have indeed lit sparks in us and awakened us to the possibility of integrating this awareness into our communal lives. We are so indebted to you for leading us more deeply into the reality of Thomas Berry's words, we are not a collection of objects, but rather a communion of subjects. 
you have given expression to this new understanding of the great cosmological questions. As we launch sparks of the universe and cosmic sparks now, we are extremely confident that these sparks of the cosmos will undoubtedly ignite our dance into the rhythm of the universe. Thank you, Margaret and Jim.